All right. Well, we are back for another live demo. And, uh, you know, it's always good when you have these live demos and it's like with a company that helps raise money for organizations. I mean, the number one thing I hear from teams and leagues that I that I work with is, you know, they, they're always looking for the best ways to raise money, get brand awareness. And so this will be exciting. I've got Scott Levin with me. He is the founder of LiveSource, a uh, platform that focuses on auctions and raffles and, and things like that. So it's going to be fun to, to get a little demo from him. Remember, feel free to um, comment, uh, post. Let us know where you're from, too, where you're tuning in from, what team or organization you're with. Uh, but definitely add questions as we're going along, and we'll make sure that Scott gets them as we're we're available. But Scott, thanks for joining me today. How's it going out in the West Coast there? Good, Andrew. Thanks for having me, man. It's great to be here, and it's good to be talking uh, uh, about the prospect of uh, auctions and sports and things coming back. So I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's exciting. I saw uh, ECHL hockey just started. I saw you have some clients in 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 the league there, and oh, you yeah. know some other things are, are getting getting moving. So it's exciting because I I love live events. So that's why I got into this business. I love them too. So t so kind of give us that story though. How did you you know come up with the idea for Live Source, and and how did you you know develop the company? Are you a tech guy? Well, no, I'm a, I'm a I'm a family law attorney. Okay. Uh, <laughs> actually, nice combination. Yeah, I'm a divorce mediator, so I, <laughs> I help keep people out of out of court and uh, focused on the future. But I've done plenty of videos about that, so we'll put that aside. <laughs> um, but you know, I have a kind of a cool story about how I how how I founded Live Source, thought about it. I was at a um, uh, function at a at a children's hospital, uh, a gala in 2015 with my wife, and they had a um, a guitar there. Uh, signed by Guns N' Roses uh, that uh, that was being auctioned off, you know, where, with the paper bidding where you would write down your bid on a piece of paper. And then, you know, if you were the winner and it went for like 800 bucks um, and I didn't win it. But I, you know, I was like, wow, that didn't seem like a lot of money for for, uh, you know, for for that guitar. But it was it was really cool looking. And it was like they actually signed the real guitar. It wasn't just the face of it. Um and so two weeks later, uh, Guns N' Roses was playing at Petco Park in San Diego. And after the opening band went uh, played, there was like a 50-minute delay before Guns N' Roses came on. And on the giant video board, the guy with the camera was just focusing on, on one single person at a time. And everyone was on their phone. So the person would be on their phone, and then they would eventually look up, and everyone would laugh. And it would be like, it was like, it could go on for like seven, eight minutes before the person would look up. And so I'm sitting there thinking, and I'm like, hey, you know, Mary, what do you think if they made an announcement right now that, that, that Slash's guitar is up for auction and it closes in 20 minutes? And guess what? He's going to hand it to you tonight. What do you think the guitar would go for? And my wife was like, a hell of a lot more than 800 bucks. Right. So we went home that night, and my wife and I co-founded LiveSource, and that's really the the impetus, impetus for the company um, we launched. Uh, I didn't have a tech background, so I uh, found a really great guy, Austin Marcella. You know, you never know how these relationships are going to go, but he was a young guy out of college, uh, you know, with a coding company, and uh, he's still with me today. Um, so super honest guy. I'm super honest, uh, and it just worked out. So we, we coded the company. I branded it, um, and... Uh, our very first client was University of San Diego. Thank you, USD. Uh, Bill McGillis, still a good friend of mine, the uh, the um, athletic director. Uh, and uh, yeah, so things have been going great. I mean, obviously, um, we we branded ourselves as a live event platform. So you know, COVID, uh, you know, definitely uh, you know impacted us. But um, you know, we're blessed. Uh, three healthy kids. You know, I, I can't complain. So. No, that's the key is making sure everybody's uh, doing well. And even in the pandemic, though, right now, like, is there a solution where Live Source could help teams even now? Like, are teams doing any? I mean, I think this would be a great time to engage with fans um, with this downtime. Yeah, you know, we've never uh, we've had auctions going on this entire time. Live Source is a moneymaker. 
So it's a money maker for teams. I like money makers. It's a money maker. And most of our partners, you know, when they're in season, they're having interns run the thing. It's so simple to use. So live source is an easy money maker and it's a data play. And then it's also a fundraising tool. So, um, you know, we've had partners throughout this entire time, uh, uh, you know, putting things up for auction and, and having great success. And going forward, live source is contactless. So, you know, when people do come back into the stands, uh, nobody's going to, even with the shot coming up, I mean, thank God we have the, the antidote here. But, you know, nobody, you know, the days I think of picking up a pen after somebody else, and writing down their bid and, 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 you know, having to miss the game to do that. That's all said and done, in my opinion. I mean, um, the only people that, um, you know, when we approach client, you know, prospective clients, you know, our, our competitor is pen and paper. And I really think that that's a, a, a thing of the past at this point. So you can have easy, simple, contactless auctions and raffles and sweepstakes and allow people to donate on their phones, computers, wherever, from wherever they are. Um, and, you know, not have to be disrupted to participate. The nice thing too, about them downloading an app and, and using it that way is the data is probably a little bit more accurate. I, I can't tell you how many times I've, we've done that enter to win or just different stuff and you can't read the darn handwriting. So yeah, <laughs> right there, I, it's a, it's a loss. Um, but I think, you know, there's a lot of cool, cool things that come along with this, but let's, uh, let's dive right in. Um, yeah. yep. I've entered, entered a win. I don't know if you can, can you share my screen yep. or being share? Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, what we're looking at is the back end of live source. So this is how, this is where our partners create opportunities. And I actually set part of this up, but I'm going to create a sweepstakes real quick and enter the win opportunity. Um, so basically, uh, you can just add a photo, I have, uh, we're going to give away a free Yeti cup here. Um, and uh, so let's say, uh, I think I might have, yeah, live source Yeti cup sweepstakes, win a, and so we're going to add a little description. Ah, Yeti cup just in time for Christmas. How many photos can you add for? You can have as many as you want, up to 12. I, I, I up to twelve. Sorry, not as many, but that's a, that's a, that's usually plenty. That's plenty. Yeah. Um. Uh. And let's just make sure everyone knows that dog, kid, and wife not included. <laughs> um. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna launch this item. And so, uh, here is the front end of Live Source. So I know it's a little confusing. I hope this isn't too confusing. I have two tabs open. So the back end of Live Source. And then this is the front end. So you can actually go to, to, the, to our website now or our apps. Our free apps are really cool. Just search Live Source on the App Store. Or you can go to uh, you know, our domain here to, um, or I think Andrew has it listed. Uh, yeah, it's scrolling. Um, and so you know, basically, uh, here's, the, uh, here's the opportunity we just created. Um, and uh, you can have as many photos. I'm going to claim my free ticket just so you can see how that works. And so now I'm entered to win. So you can see that the entered overlay is over there. And I'm also going to send out a notification, which all of our partners can do. So win a free Yeti cup customized with live source. So then this will go out to... Um, all of our users that are associated with my account. So one of the cool things about Live Source is that whenever anyone bids with a client, claims a free raffle ticket, buys a raffle ticket, whenever they participate, Andrew, with a client, uh, they go in that those people go into an internal Live Source database for that client. And so the next time that that client uh, uh, launches an event with Live Source, all those people get a notification on their phone and in their email when you launch that event. So you're not starting from scratch every single time that you launch a new event, hoping that people see your Facebook post um, or, you know, uh, you know, how, or, you know, that you tweet it out. We all know that social media click rates are like, you know, 1% or so. So that's really the real key to live source in my opinion 
is that it's like a snowball rolling downhill. Um, because you, the more people that you can capture in your internal live source database, which is automatic when people bid with you, they're added to you that list. Um, you know, the, the more people you can get there, the next time that you launch an event, they're automatically going to be added to that uh, notification list. And those notification click rates are like 85%. So almost everybody that, that's, that, that participated in the past will participate in your next event with you. What's uh, cool too is I just downloaded the app and signed up in like probably 30 seconds. And I, I did claim my raffle ticket too, by the way. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> but it's pretty simple. I mean, simple, simple sign up. And you can see so far 29 people, 30 people. You can see actually it's ticking away how many people have claimed their free raffle tickets. So, I mean, I don't want to show the data, but these are, so when you, so here's me real quick. So you get the name, the email and the cell phone of everybody that claims a free ticket. Now can that can you export that like yeah. or do you, okay. All exportable and and so and it's and everything one another cool thing about live source everything is in real time. So you don't have to refresh any page on the back end. So we're looking again at the back end. So you can see as as people claim their free raffle tickets, you know, so it that, updates in real time. Is that real? Like there's really 34 people. Yeah. yeah I mean I, I don't want to give away their data too much, but um yeah. you know they're wow, all the control. Cool claiming their ticket. This was mine, but yep. yeah. And then everyone else is there too. So yeah, so it's real. So, you know, live source has, you know, what it, it's just so it, we make it so easy for people that, you know, even for a Yeti cup, they're like, Hey, hell yeah, I'll get a Yeti cup. Um, and so Andrew, do you mind unsharing? I'm going to just, do you mind unsharing me real quick? And then, okay. So I wanted to show you guys, uh, I created a quick, a, 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 a an auction that I wanted to kind of show you how we would launch that. So give me one second here. Going back to like the raffle, like what do, I mean, do teams do that just kind of as like, you know, like to, to capture data? Is that kind of the purpose for those raffles or what, what do the teams really get out of the raffles? Cause that one was free. Yeah. So that one is, that's a pure data play. All right, we got Scott back. Yay. Sorry, man. I don't know. Hey, what play that video. Technology, man. We're, we're across the country, so. Oh, gosh. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's all good. So uh, I don't know where you lost me, but. Uh, um, just about some of the data, you know, and, and what teams are, are using it for. Um, so yeah. and you're getting ready to kind of go into your next um, phase here. Yeah, sorry about that. Um. But yeah, I, I, let me just show you in case this happens again. Let me show you a uh, an auction that I set up uh, for us. Um, and so this is the back end of Live Source. I'm using a, a Carolina Cobras auction as an example. They did a sweep uh, a, a, a Star Wars jersey night uh, last season uh, with Live Source. And so we're on the back end, and I created all these items under inactive. And so. We're just going to go ahead and activate these um, these items, and I'm going to just show you real quick, you know what what it looks like on the uh, on the front end. So, so here's what we just created: Star Wars Jersey Night. Uh, you can always donate, so you can have a donation goal. So I put in $5,000 for our donation goal and people can donate by just simply selecting this amount. Um, and then if they do, the donors will appear on the donors list here. So people get credit for donating. Um, and then as, as people donate towards the $5,000 goal, there's a cool little bar that appears here that shows the progress. And then when you hit the $5,000 goal, it gives you a little confetti blow up, which nice. is fun for people. Um, so here's a paid raffle. So uh, basically uh, for the paid raffle, we're raffling off this game worn helmet. Um, and one raffle ticket is five bucks. So you could click like, Hey, I want to buy one raffle ticket. Uh, and then you'll be entered to win. So like now I've been entered and then the live source system will randomly select the winner and notify the everyone that they either won or lost. And you can have as many raffle items as you want. So one, one ticket's five bucks, Andrew, but you can also have raffle bundles. 
So five tickets can be 20. So you're getting, so normally five tickets would be 25. So you're giving like a little incentive yeah. uh, for people buying more. So 10 for 40, you can have as many of these bundles as possible as you want. Do the teams, you know, have, can they customize that how they want? Yeah, totally customizable. So when I, you know, I created this event, to, this, this takes like three minutes to do and you can create, yeah. When, when you, when you, it says, do you want a raffle? You say, yes. And then it gives you all these options to create whatever bundles you want. So you could have two for 20, three for 15, you know, whatever you want. So it's really customizable. And it's so much better than like having people walk around and have to tear tickets and like handle cash out there. Yep, exactly. Um, and so here's a, here's how it would look like once some of the items are sold. So they would go into the sold section and it will show you like how much that they sold for. Um, and then, so that's, a, th these ones actually, I had timing, timing down to, uh, to uh, 120. So we got, because of the, uh, the internet glitch, we <laughs> didn't see them close like how I wanted you to. <laughs> but um, so these ones were set to count down, like, you know, 20 minutes, 1959, 1958. Right. So that's an option and you can have, I put two pictures on these. Um, there's also a couple of cool features here. There's a handling fee that you can set. So like you can set a handling fee of five bucks or $1 or $2. So it's a way to kind of counter the credit card fee that, um, that, that our clients have to pay. Just like if you go to a grocery store or if you go to like a gas station and you try to pay with a credit card for like a pack of gun, they charge you like 35 cents. So that's like the handling fee. So that's totally something you can have or not have. And then we have an, a shipping, a whole shipping mechanism. So shipping can be paid for at checkout and then the people give their um, shipping information. So there's no need for like offline communication. Um, and then the feature that I wanted you to see was overtime bidding. Um, the internet uh, impacted that, like I said, but basically anytime someone bids, with less than one minute left in the auction, the clock resets automatically to, to one minute. So there's no like bidding with one second left, which I know some people like. You can <laughs> bid with one second left, but it just resets the clock to 59, 58, 57. And that that feature has, has resulted Great. in tremendous growth for our clients. Yeah, I mean, that, that gets extra money for the, for the organization. And I'm sure some yeah. of these teams are probably tying in charities with this stuff as well, so. Totally. Yeah. That, that on average, it's about 18% revenue growth since we launched that feature a couple of years ago. Nice. Um, and then this is another, this is another option that our clients have because we were created for live sports um, originally. Um, so like instead of this one counting down, you can see I wrote the end time is the end of the third quarter. So you could have any, you could set a manual end time. Um, so like if, you know, the end of the eighth inning is the perfect time for you to, to close your auctions, but when's the end of the eighth inning? You can't guess that. Um, you know, you don't know it's going to be at exactly at 9 p.m. Right. So you can just write end of the eighth inning or end of the third quarter. And when that happens, then you can manually just click one button and it will end the auctions for you. Um, so, again, that's um, that's kind of like, you know, an example of just one of the little features that we have um to you know that to show that we were really made for sports um to place a bid you just you know click uh you select any of these amounts i'll place a bid uh just so you can see how it looks um and so now i'm winning this item um and then or you could buy it now so like this is something that's totally okay. customizable so i you, our clients can set the first initial bid amount um so like i put the hundred dollars for the first bid or, or you can also have um, a, a, a buy it now price. So like you can have auctions or you can have an auction with a buy it now. Um, and you can see it adds in the $5 handling fee. So 450 is the buy it now price, but the, it's really 455. And if I click yes, this item's gonna be sold to me. I don't wanna have to refund myself $455. So I'll spare myself that. But um, so, and then when you're winning, you actually, or when you're, uh, when you're leading an auction, it will show you that you're winning here. And then if someone outbids me on this item right now, um, then I'll get a notification in, in my email and, and on my phone that says that um, I've been outbid. 
Um, so tons of notifications that are totally built in uh, without you, without our clients having to do anything. It's all automated. Um, and the other thing I kind of want to show you, Andrew, is that um, is that we also do uh, just straight buy it now items. So with live sort, it's auctions. It's an auction with a buy it now. If you want that feature, it's raffles, it's sweepstakes, it's donations, and it's just straight buy it now. So this is an item that actually the um, Akron rubber ducks are kind of famous um, for having a mystery bobblehead every season. Um, and so this is their image that I took from their one of our partners. Um, and so they're so in this case, we're selling a bobblehead for, and there's 250 available and they're $10 each. So in just one single listing. So when I buy the first one, um, it's going to say that it's going to change. There's 250 to 249. So did you see that that switch from 250 to 249? And then when we get down to zero, it's going to get, it's going to say sold out automatically. Um, and, uh, you know, so this this is actually their text that I took from their um, their bobblehead. You know, uh, uh, buy it now on Live Source. And what was really cool about this is that typically um, they have a huge line of people that want to buy the bobbleheads at their stadium when in when it's in real time, like when we're in non COVID yeah. times. But with Live Source, what what the, what Scott Riley told me, he's the uh, the AGM, is that you know with Live Source when they did this digitally or or on Live Source. That line went away because basically people just go up to the desk. They can show on their phone that they purchased one, two, three, however many they bought, and then they get their item and go. They don't have to sit there and pay, and you know, and and build that giant lineup because people are at the ballpark are not are not wanting to uh, you know wait in line. That's not what they're there for. What other um, things do teams do for the buy it now feature? I mean, do they put like you know? I mean, does anybody use it for like their like merch online yeah. or anything else? Totally. Yeah, tons of people use it for just regular merch, uh, seats. Like if they have, uh, you know, um, just like general admission seats, like, you know, really anything. It's, I've seen so much, um, you know, with Live Source, like right now, this is, these are the items that people are selling on Live Source. So here's a, an, a real auction that's going on. Um, for the Bowie Bay Sox, another baseball club. And so they're using, you can see here, if I click onto this Manny Machado ball, they use a ton of photos. So you just kind of scroll, you can see all the photos. Yeah. Um, and they're using the buy it now feature as well. So like the current bid is 30 bucks or $25. The next bid would be 30. Uh, but the, the 65 bucks is the buy it now price. And if I scroll to the bottom here, they've sold a, bu a bunch of people have actually clicked the buy it now already. So all these ones mean because they're sold already, but th there's still two days left in the auction. These were sold because people clicked buy it now and ended the auction early. Um, so, I mean, you know, on live source, it's just like people are trying to, to generate revenue right now. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, here's a here's the right right um, <laughs> They're a hockey club. Their players painted ornaments, and they're selling these ornaments. They're doing an auction for these ornaments. Um, so you know, clubs so, are trying to generate revenue, and Live Source is a solution to that. So you can access the auctions and the items either through a website or the app. Correct. Okay, that's good because sometimes it's just the app only, and then you know, if you don't have the app, it, you can't, you can't do it. So I like that, that you could do both. But I was just thinking, I'm like, I'm going to tell these guys auction off like a special team captain of the game. Totally. Experience you know? are awesome. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that uh, I think, yeah, you like, uh, you know, in, as a, like, so um, I know one of our one of our partners always gives away like a kid runs in from the pitching mound to I mean from the from like where they war the warm up yeah. area to the mound in the seventh inning, and they always just pick a random kid. Yeah. Well, now they do that as a sweepstakes, and all the people that enter they get the, the it's a data yeah. and it's great. I'm I'm a big fan of data data capturing and and utilizing that data because man, once you have it, it's it's powerful. 
Yeah, and I mean, there's not, uh, you know, here's a uh, an auction that uh, West Virginia University just launched. They're one of our partners. Um, I think they just launched this yet today. Is today the 14th or the 15th? Uh, today's the 15th. Yeah. So um, this is for their baseball team. So they've been doing, they've had great success uh, all football season selling like game used helmets, uh, you know, fan opportunities um, for next season, obviously to go into like the locker room. Um, this is an auction for the San Diego soccers, their soccer, uh, indoor soccer team. I know those guys. Well, yeah, they're great guys. Love, love the soccers. Love Mary Beth. Um, but yeah. Any other? Do you are there any? Did anyone ask any questions, or is there not yet? Anybody have questions out there? Please post them in here. Um, you know, I definitely you know have a few more. Um, talk to me about like you know the economics of it. Maybe not specifically, but like you know, how do you guys make your money? So like, am I paying like a licensing fee up front? And are you getting a piece of each sale? How does that work? Yeah, so right now in December, we're waiving our licensing fee. We do have an upfront licensing fee. So any partners that are would be interested um, in partnering with us, if, if you sign up in December, there will never be uh, a licensing fee this year or into the future. Okay. Uh, and, then it, and then we become true partners. So that's what LiveSource is kind of famous for. Um, we're true partners. We only make money when our clients make money. So we get paid a percentage, a small percentage of each sale. Um, and we, we give our clients a ton of, uh, ideas. We have a weekly newsletter that goes out, um, where we're, we're letting people know what other teams are and clients are using live source for, uh, to give them ideas. And we're pretty legendary. Uh, we have pretty legendary customer service. So, um, you know, uh, when, when there's an auction going on, we have a staff waiting for people to call or email and uh, when someone emails us, I have a staff of six, whoever responds first. So the email goes to all six people, whoever responds first gets a little green check mark. Uh, and, uh, and then they get a little bonus at the end of each month for having the most green check mark. So oh, wow. uh, we respond as quickly, you know, really quickly to questions. And I think we're pretty much known for, uh, for helping our clients out, you know, instantaneously. All right, we got a question from Robert. What's the most oddball auctions that you've seen? And I'm sure there has to be some crazy stuff out there. You know, I, the the one that just comes to mind real quick is that the Carolina Thunderbirds, uh, a great hockey organization, did a, a win a date with each of their players. Oh, and then, uh, the dates were I think on the ice. I don't think that each player like went. Uh, you know, I think they were at the stadium, but yeah, it was win a date, um, which was real fun for people. And that was really successful. Like you should have seen some of the bidding. Uh, we we did that uh, for a team I had at one point, and um, it was it was a live auction. So you had like player girlfriends fighting with like other. <laughs> it, it it was hilarious. Uh, this That's would be awesome. really cool though for that. I would think that would be uh, a lot of fun. So, but yeah, I think um, you know that's good. How about like, you know, give us an idea of like what kind of money um, can be raised through like this platform? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say, uh, you know, live source uh, for two baseball seasons ago, because minor league baseball didn't play, you know, this season. So I guess not this summer, but the summer previously, our minor league baseball partners generated over $3.5 million through live source. So, wow. and we don't have every single team. I mean, we wish right. we did. <laughs> Not yet. Um, yeah. Come on. But the revenue is really, really strong. So like a Jersey auction, uh, you know, where, you know, they're selling, you know, 25, 30 jerseys, you know, very easily, you know, generates, you know, North of $10,000, um, dollars, uh, you know, had auctions, you know, uh, you know, less, but like the key is almost everything gets sold or, or really everything gets sold through live source, uh, because of that notification feature where you know, our partners are not starting from zero people and tweeting out like, please join our Jersey auction. Right. Uh, all the people that participated in the past get that notification, um, whether it's on their phone or email. 
so everything gets sold. Our partners put in a mi the minimum bids amounts that they want. Um, uh, actually, if you wanted to, uh, if you could unshare me real quick, I could I could kind of show you a, a, a cool, if I can find it. Um, real, real quick while you're looking for that, though, is I just thought of this. Because of this app, you're able to capitalize on people that aren't even at the event. Oh, yeah. And, you. And, you know, that's, you know, say you have a down a down game or, or whatever. Everybody's going to get the notification. Um, hopefully, you're you're blasting that to your, your email database to begin with so that they're on the app um, and things like that. I've got uh, Patrick over here with ViewStub. Uh, they're a streaming service. You know, might be some ways to collaborate with uh, their virtual events, too. So I'll make sure I connect you guys there. Um, Patrick, yeah. dude, they've got a great product over at ViewStub. And, uh, you know, Matt thinks, you know, winning a date with Ted, Tad Hamilton would be great. But I think we should do a uh, win a date with Matt Wolf. He is the uh, CEO of Ticket Time Machine. So we'll get him. He needs to connect with you as well because he's got some great products um, out there. Yeah, you could if you want to try to share my screen real quick. I'll show you. Yep. Uh, okay. So, I, oh yeah, it's all going to show the data. Uh, well, so this is a Justin Turner jersey uh, that the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes um, uh, did a, a jersey auction with us, and I don't want to show the data, but my I, what I wanted to show real quick was like this is the bidding that takes place. So like the jersey, the 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 auction closes at uh, at nine thirty. Closed at nine thirty this night. Uh, and at 910 or 909, it was at 600. And then it went, ended up at 1900. Um, you know, just because of the notifications, someone bids and someone rebids, someone bids and someone rebids, and they get all get notifications. Um, so, uh, you know, it can be, you know, effective. And he wasn't even, he didn't play in the game. Um, he was there though, rehabbing. And so, uh, and then these are, with live source, there's no limitation on on the number of events our partners use us for. So, uh, it, we partnered with the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes for two seasons, and these are all the different types of events they've done with us. So, jersey auctions, hat auctions, hat auctions, uh, and you can see too that they build in like their little uh, you know Safeco insurance. So that's obviously a paid promotion, I assume, from them. Um, so, you know, this also becomes a, you know, an opportunity for sponsorship, uh, Sierra Delta. I'm not sure what Sierra Delta is, but, um, you know, the, you put your, you know, Toyota of San Diego on, on the image and everyone's staring at every image, you know, scrolling through, you know, it becomes a way for you to generate money, you know, through a paid promotion as well. Now, is there like, if I sign up with my team, well, well, I have like a URL that, you know, like forward slash, you know, Andrew's team, like yeah. so all my stuff can, I can share that from my website. And as I add stuff, it just automatically goes on there. Yeah. So, um, so it does, uh, yeah, you, every, every event has its own URL and you can send that out through, um, you know, through your social media or whatever. And, and it, it clicks right through to your page. Nice. Yeah. And I, I, I promise you, Andrew, when we started this, it wasn't this sophisticated. You know, right. we didn't know we didn't know what we didn't know. Right. Right. <laughs> like well, the gentleman that just asked uh, that question, you know, you don't know about what you don't know about when you start a technology company. And, uh, we we made many that. upgrades. Didn't think of that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we continue to upgrade, you know, constantly. So why, like, this is just me being, you know, nosy and curious. Why would someone not want to sign up for this? Like, what's the like, what what kind of responses do you get from teams as far as why they don't want to come on? Because to me, it's like, you know, if I own a team or I'm GM in a team, it's like a no brainer. Yeah. So the the pat the, in the past, the, the 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 objections were that our fans are a little bit older and they or the ones that participate, uh, you know, th that have that free cash skew a little bit older um and there's a concern you know what how they would handle the technology but my rebuttal to that was always but you don't want that fan to have to get out of their seat and come down to like your little stand and fill out a, and miss the game i i don't think i wouldn't want to do that but that was the main objection in the past but like i said uh you know contactless touchless um 
you know, auctions are definitely here to stay. Uh, and people just are, especially older people are just not going to want to touch other people's pens and, and fill out pieces of paper anymore. That, that was always the main objection is that it's working. We, we make money for these charities through this, through doing auctions on a piece of paper. We've always done it that way. And we don't want to risk it not working and losing that charity partner and making them um, them unha unhappy. Do you work a lot with um, nonprofits as well? Yeah, tons of nonprofits. So um, that that we started in sports, that was always our passion. My passion. I didn't get. I didn't necessarily get get into this to just be a charity platform. You know, I, I love going. Like I love traveling to see our partners. Uh, and go to games. I mean, that's why, you know, we did this. You're going to see a dog in the background. Sorry. Nice. Hey, uh, part of the right <laughs> there. I have three kids right over here doing their homework. They're being so, uh, they're so quiet. quiet. What's wrong with those kids? I mean, they should <laughs> around. I appreciate them. Uh, but, uh, you know, the COVID, right. We're all dealing yeah. with it. Um, but yeah, uh, but a ton of charity partners, uh, now, and, uh, we're definitely looking to grow that side of our business. Patrick also had a suggestion to it. I don't know if you have it, but being able to plug that info right on the team websites through like an iframe plugin or, you know, embedded. So um, I think that yeah. would make it even, even uh, to the next level. But Patrick, I'd love to, I'd love to connect with you, man. And talk with you. Yeah. You know, you know, you both, uh, each other's contact info. And cool. you know, I know Patrick is also uh, um, talking with the guys over at the, uh, NAL, you know, the arena league. So, yeah. um, you know, I know the guys are excited to hear from you as well on that. Cause I mean, again, this is, it definitely just from, from going to your website to going through this, it's like, man, there's so many applications. I can see this helping, you know, a team, you know, raise money and it doesn't involve, you know, really more staff or more investment. It's, it's time, you know, setting it up. It looks like it took, you know, less than a minute to do, you know, even if it takes two minutes the first time, you know, it's a simple process. So yeah, it's simple. Uh, and you can get as creative as you want. I mean, in the off season, I think it would be great to be doing some sort of raffle or, or live auctions so that you're engaging those fans all the time. Yeah. Sponsor. So yeah, we never, we never had like a day, a single day without, you know, three or four at least auctions and raffles going on during this time. Hey, buddy! Come on. Well, too, we got. Um, I'm going to bring uh, Jack Jack Graham on. He uh, okay. joining us. Scott, you want to introduce him? Yeah, Jack Graham is the GM at the Aberdeen Ironbirds. A great partner. Hey, Jack. Hey, guys. Sorry for being late. We were uh, we we're having a meeting. Uh, things have gone from crazy slow and boring to uh, light speed in the last week for for minor league teams. <laughs> yes, sir. Congratulations on the move. Thank you. It's exciting. I'm glad to uh, to have a little bit more clarity, and we're excited to stay on with the Orioles. And um, you know, I think our fans are excited too. And you're gonna have so Jack. The uh, Ironbirds were a NY Penn League team with a short season. Yep. yep. And now, how many more games will you have, Jack? Well, in a normal regular season, unaffected by a pandemic, I think we're looking at 28 more games. We're going to go from 38 to 66, and we are looking at, um, you know, obviously some different opponents, but maybe some similar opponents as well. So um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a change for the community. It's going to be a change for the team. It's going to be a change for the staff, but all for the positive, I think. Awesome. That's great. Hey, Jack, tell us about um, your experience with with Live Source and and you know how it's worked for you. Kind of some of the things that you've done. We're, we're kind of doing like a nice little live yeah. demo, and uh, you know Scott's done a great job. But I always like to hear from some people actually using it. Scott's always going to say great stuff. <laughs> he's, he's slightly biased, but uh, you know what? At this point, so am I. It's funny because I think that it was two years ago this month that Scott called me, uh, uh, winter of, of 2018. And or maybe it was winter of 2017. I, I don't recall exactly. Um, must have been winter of 2017. I just finished my first season with the Ironbirds, and I had convinced our at the time general manager to let me explore digital auction platforms because I um, had gone through a full season of in-person folding tables and pieces of paper and uh, Bic roller pens uh, auctions with our fans, and I was just absolutely dead set on not doing that again. And so. 
Um, I had explored some other options. I had basically just Googled um, uh, online auction platforms and I'd found some that were specifically meant for nonprofits. I had, uh, I had been pitched by another organization that was sports oriented auction platform that didn't quite meet what I was expecting. And um, unfortunately, uh, I signed a contract like two weeks before Scott called me with a different auction platform that I won't name because I don't like it and I won't be mean. Um, <laughs> and uh, he called me and he explained what LiveSource was and he described it and he sent me a link to the app. And I looked at it and I said, if I had not literally two weeks ago signed a contract uh, with this other platform, I would be on board. And it was a one-year con contract. It went uh, about as well as I thought it would, which was not very well with that other company. And immediately, as soon as I could, I got on board with LiveSource because the the iPhone app, the Android app, the back end being so user friendly and and so well maintained, and uh, Scott and his whole team being so uh, responsive, uh, it was like night and day going from 2018 to 2019 uh, with LiveSource. And um, to date, we've raised thousands of dollars for charity. We've generated thousands of dollars in revenue. Uh, we've been able to collect hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, bitter uh, pieces of data. Um, it's honestly, I mean, Scott and I probably talk once a month, or, or if not more, because we just love it, and and not because it has any problems, but because we genuinely really enjoy Live Source. And um, you know, any component of the of the platform works really well because his team uh, makes sure that they work well beforehand, even though you know, uh, there are things obviously we're all working on, but so far everything I've asked Scott for and his team, I think that they've incorporated every single suggestion I've made um, and they all work great. So um, needless to say, after all of that, um, I love it. And he's not paying me to say that, so. How about um, learning curve for the fans? So, you know, if your fans were used to the old way, was it, you know, Pretty seamless. Did you did you right. see similar numbers right away? Um, so I think that the the learning curve. Uh, I think LiveSource benefited from the learning curve having happened with the other auction platform the year before. Um, our fan base, like a lot of minor league teams' fan base and a lot of sports teams' fan bases, is a little bit older, a little bit suspicious of technology. But we tried the other platform, and their user interface is fine. It's the back end that I really struggled with. It's the it's the um, the setup that I really had a hard time with. Um, and so our fans got the understanding of digital platform. And by the time LiveSource came in in 2019, we were off to the races and um, they knew a little bit more about what to expect. There's always gonna be those fans who, who say, I'm not gonna do a digital auction. I'm not going to give you my credit card number. And I honestly just told them, I understand, that's fine. You don't have to participate because this is the way that we're gonna do it. I'm not going to continue to do paper and pen. I'm not going to continue to do folding tables. And uh, I tell an anecdote about our fans having a learning curve. Their learning curve was not learning how to use an online website or app to buy things. Amazon is pervasive. It's ubiquitous. Uh, and and LiveSource is just as easy, if not easier, than, than Amazon to use. And one of the things that our fans said, which kind of drove me crazy, was, well, I miss being able to, to stand in front of someone and not let them bid on the piece of paper with a pen. I miss not being able to play defense. And I said, this is for charity. We're selling these Star Wars jerseys for the Miracle League. What's wrong with you? So uh, I, was, I was glad to tell that person that unfortunately they won't be able to play defense anymore. And, uh, and I was thrilled about that. So um, the learning curve was very easy. We actually generated way more revenue uh, the first year of digital auctions and even more revenue the year after because it was so easy to do. And with live source not having a limit on the number of events that you can run, um, it made the world our oyster. Did you have any more auctions and, and more raffles? Yes, absolutely. So there's two things that we did that uh, really helped to make the difference. The first thing is we were able to do more raffles because they were so easy to set up and so easy to execute and so easy to communicate with our fans that we went from having six raffles in 2017, uh, or excuse me, I think four, three or four raffles in 2017, to having six in 2018 because the platform we used had a limit, uh, to having uh, not only more than a half a dozen 
auctions on jerseys and and items and raffles but also we constructed a zero dollar mm -hmm. enter to win as a mechanism to um, collect data so we would have a certain prize every night and that enter to win would have have the prize on it it would have a, a the the ability to redeem a free raffle ticket and a place to put your data and so every night i had a chance to uh, collect data connect with fans and understand what moves the needle does an autographed baseball from last year's third baseman move the needle or do four tickets to the uh, july 4th game move the needle um and so those two things really made the difference and helped us to engage on a higher level and we were really excited and still are uh, about 2020 because we are going to a digital program and so you know the the live source uh, experiment of digital auctions gave us the confidence to get rid of our paper program we'd uh, printed over 4,000 programs a night for the last 18 seasons and we decided we were done with that and uh, some of our, our, our fans were not so hot about that and some of our sponsors were not so hot until I explained to them the interactivity the digital components and from my perspective, being able to put a live source ad in our program, 66 nights a year now, to have people click to enter to win any given night, uh, right from their phone, the same phone that they already are using. Um, so that's still something that's on the horizon is digital programs incorporating live source and a link to the app to collect their information, do the enter to win, do the raffles, promote the charitable uh, raffles and auctions that we're doing. Um, it's it's just that easy. That's yeah, I, I just thought of this when you were talking. I don't know if you've used it this way or even Scott, if you've heard of teams, but I'm always I'm a big guy as far as like community events and, and being out in the community. But data capture is number one, you know, for those things. And so I've always looked at a solution that can streamline instead of the old fashioned. Hey, I've got my interns inputting, you know, yeah. 5,000 forms. So have you guys or Scott, do you know of any teams that utilize it for that, like enter to win raffles at um, community events? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, like I said, um, there's no limitation uh, for our partners to utilize the platform. The more, the better. I mean, we're looking to grow. We're looking to grow our users, our partners. So the more activity, the better. So yeah, absolutely. We have partners that uh, uh, take take the live source platform on the road to, you know, uh, the dog adoption event or whatever they are uh, up to in, in the community. Jack actually, uh, in a way, kind of did that with uh, one of his uh, charity partners and um, and they used the platform for, you know, live source uh, for their uh, virtual gala. What was that, like four or five months ago, Jack? It was a while ago. It, it seems like just yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Because of the the demands that they made on your platform, which you were easily able to accommodate, which was great. They they're a, um, a nonprofit located in Baltimore, the Kennedy Krieger Institute. They're one of the number one uh, global institutes for ne neurodivergence research or neuro neurodiversity, meaning people who maybe don't think the same way as you or I do, and uh, making sure that those people have the same educational and uh, professional opportunities that are available to us. So they had a huge fundraiser, they were massively successful. They collected data uh, through that through that uh, fundraiser, that auction, not only the people who won the auctions, which is usually the data you collect, but also anyone else who bid, who they could reach out to and make, um, and, and thank them for trying to win an auction. And also people who just wanted to make small donations of uh, you know $5 or $10, or some people made significant contributions through that platform. So. Um, they were very pleased. We're going to use it again in the future. We used it for um, a raffle and auction uh, to benefit the local Boys and Girls Club, to benefit uh, community members who were affected by COVID-19 during the pandemic. Um, and, you know, the data capture is huge because not only do we make LiveSource an opportunity to make money, to generate revenue, but it has genuinely saved me hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on not having an intern sitting at a computer keying data entry. And instead, they can be doing something productive or we can potentially eliminate that, uh, that position altogether because we do pay our interns. No, let that not be a, a jab at uh, teams who don't. But if yep. anybody has an internship this summer, just let me know. This years ago. <laughs> not great. I mean, it's it's such a great tool. I didn't mean to hijack that, Scott, when Jack came on, but I had some questions. Oh, I love it. 
Yeah, thank you. Anything else, um, you know, please. No, I mean, I really appreciate Jack taking a few minutes of his time. I know you're busy, Jack. And, um, and Andrew, I really appreciate uh, you inviting me on here and giving me the platform. And uh, just looking forward to continuing the growth, uh, continuing to help raise money for people and teams and, uh, and organizations and charities and, and doing my part to uh, hopefully uh, not have to uh, uh, be a family lawyer for more than uh, one day longer. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, I think that that's a great ambition for you, Scott. And if anybody who's watching this live or sees a replay wants to email me, jgram at ironbirdsbaseball.com. That's my email address. Uh, I can talk about live source all day. And uh, not only will I give you the ideas that I have, but I will probably steal any good ideas that you have. So uh, let well, me know. I'm glad to uh, to help out. And thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for that feedback. Like I said, it's always, it's always good to have, you know, a firsthand user and, and, uh, you know, not just Scott smiling, looking, looking good over there. Like yeah. telling me how great it is. You can't see the uh, gut from here, right? <laughs> uh, it's, well, what I it's can awesome. see is the beautiful San Diego weather, which I'm jealous of. It's going to snow tomorrow. So I'm not jealous. I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, too excited to be here. I'd rather be outside. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm tired of those that cold. I'm like, I'm, I think I'm, I tell my wife I'm too old to live up north now. So we're in Orlando. We'll stay nice. here. Nice. It is cold, and that's fine. Good. But uh, we'll have this replayed. Um, any questions? Visit uh, livesourceapp.com. Uh, feel free to reach out to uh, Jack, um, and his email is on on screen. And uh, see if it can help your organization. You know, sports teams, leagues, nonprofits. Um, I mean, if you're a sports team and don't give Scott a call, I want to have a talk with you because it yeah. makes zero sense to me. <laughs> so definitely reach out. For business. But uh, any any last words? No, I just really appreciate you both of you, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, you know, uh, be well to each other. Be well to everyone. So thank you. Stay safe, everybody. <laughs>